Chris and all, welcome back. Hi, hello, welcome. If you are new, it's lovely to have you. So, um, this video is going to be basically just a little sewing chat video. I was originally going to schedule a video about the costumes in... I've started saying costume because costume, and <laughs> I entirely blame... <laughs> doing so much with the costume gang over the last couple of weeks because I... <sighs> so originally this was going to be a video about the costumes the costumes in the TV series uh, Vikings because I have thoughts and opinions on that that I will be sharing with you but after last weekend that was Cocovid which was the big costume, um, basically conference if you like, where we had panels and we had talks and we had extra videos and I did a load of editing for that and I did a load of work for that and it was glorious and I had a wonderful time and since then I have doubled the number of subscribers so if you are a new subscriber and you came here from costume, thank you so much. I will be putting lots more costume and reenactment related content up and I am just knackered because this week has been a big old week. Uh, I have had a lot of work on besides video making. I'm still working on my PhD, I'm still uh, doing other side jobs, I'm pulling a couple of jobs right now, so uh, forgive me for not putting that video up this week, it will be up next weekend instead. Today uh, we are going to be sewing together. I am sewing a little 18th century linen jacket that is kind of roughly lined at the moment, or kind of roughly interlined with some with some nice white linen. Uh, this thing has been on my to-do list for I think about a year now, maybe a little bit longer, but it's based off some like 1820s images of stable jackets and that kind of thing because I don't really have any light reenactment kit for this period. I have a velvet suit uh, and I will be making a 19, an 18th century wool suit soon but I don't actually have any like summer wear and when all of the events for this period that I've been to have been in the summer it seems like a good idea to have some just nice day wear uh, so Zach Pinson actually inspired me with his lovely grey linen suit that he wears so I'm making this jacket and I'm currently far enough in that I have to do the buttonholes and I am not looking forward to that but I have done two where are they? two buttonholes there they are will you focus please? what focusing mode are we even in? why are you not focusing? penis. This is great content. Here they are, buttonholes number one and two. These came after a hell of a lot of practice, so like several people have commented on these being like, oh my god, you're so good at buttonholes. Uh, no. No. Not my camera there. I'm very good at videography. No, I am, I'm not good at buttonholes. I have practiced these specific buttonholes with this specific thread. I am not a buttonholer. Um, it is not my jam. But this is... What I'm using for this is... It's not actual buttonholing thread. Um, because it couldn't find it in the right colour. And this is more history inspired. I'm thinking this might become a history bounding thing. Uh, if any of you know me in person, you'll know that I actually don't wear historical clothing very much in public. Every now and then, yes. Like, if it's super hot, I might wear my linen uh, Regency breeches or uh, a Viking linen tunic or something. But I don't do history bounding as a rule. It's not my jam. It hasn't been my jam. And I think it might become my thing because... I have found that I really like the way I look in kind of 1810s, 20s clothing and their silhouettes. I think I look really elegant in them, and it's very rare for me to find that kind of uh, look that I think suits me. It's rare that I find a look that I think I look nice in. So I'm going to have a little crack at making something that I think will be practical. It's got a big pocket on the inside, big enough for a mobile, uh, and also look kind of nice. So we'll see how it goes. I might decide against it. 
uh, anyway, that's enough moidering about that. This thread, as I was saying, is uh, embroidery thread, which I am splitting down the middle. I'm splitting it in half. And it's doing a sterling job as buttonholing. It is, what is it? It's, it's Moulinet Special DMC 25. It means nothing. That's nothing. Fabrique en France. That's useful. It's just cotton embroidery thread. It's just DMC cotton embroidery thread. That's gone. It's that. It's this stuff. And it matches this pretty perfectly there. Looks great. And I actually did the top stitching. I did the uh, the prick stitching in pink. In pink silk thread. For some reason, I decided that contrasting pink would look nice. And it's not perfect. I'm not a great tailor in this period, or any period, um, but it will do the job nicely. So hopefully this will look like a nice, slightly fancy, slightly poofy shouldered jacket, and I won't look like a mess. And then I'm not sure what to wear with it, but seeing as skinny jeans are quite popular still, and I actually own several pairs of very slim fitting trousers, I might make some high-waisted, slim-fitting trousers to go with them in the style of kind of 1820s pantaloons. Um, I'll try and get a picture up. Future editing Jimmy put a picture of pantaloons up for this bit. And I think those might look nice with it. And that would have the added benefit of, if I make them cleverly, potentially being something I could wear to reenactment events as well. So they could look entirely historical, but be practical enough to wear as everyday wear. That is a little challenge for me because normally if I'm doing 18th or 19th century stuff I am trying to dress like a... if this is a challenge that I can face and meet and you can come with me on that journey which will definitely involve lots of swearing and embarrassing and getting stuff wrong so that will make nice content. Here we go, buttonhole number three is about to begin and I'm not looking forward to this. If I can get one buttonhole done in this video, it'll be great. Yeah, Coco Bid was an amazing experience. It was great. I went into it not knowing mostly what I was doing, and I've come out of it feeling almost like I know what I'm doing in terms of making YouTube videos. I, I've spent so much I've spent so much time, I've spent hours and hours and hours over the last few weeks talking with the other Coco Vid organizers and the members of the Coztube community. Especially uh, people like Abby Cox, who you should follow because she's awesome, uh, have been giving me amazing advice on every single aspect of YouTube and making videos and making videos about costuming and making historically uh, historically inspired videos. And it's now it's now approaching the stage where I have like fifteen hundred subscribers on here. To quote. Um, Macho Man Randy Savage, it's mind boggling to me. Like, I cannot believe that I've got 1500 subscribers. Hi, welcome, thank you so much for, for wanting to watch my stupid Welsh face. Diolch, Diolch o'r Galon. Um, thank you very much, Diolch o'r Galon, but OMG, like, yay. <laughs> it's so cool, it's so cool to have, um, so cool to have subscribers. But yeah, after Covid, I kind of got post-con blues, and if you're not familiar with post-con blues, or post-event blues, reenactors get it a lot, um, cosplayers get it a lot, and people who like comic books get it a lot, because they will go to a, a con, they go to a convention, uh, reenactors will go to an event, and we'll see all of our friends, we'll have a great time, uh, we'll relax, we'll, we'll fight, we'll, we'll eat and drink outside, and go camping, and have an amazing time, and then on Monday, we're all back at work, or school, or university, and remembering all of the amazing stuff we did over the weekend and just going, oh man, it sucks, and it's a real thing. But yeah, I, I had a serious case of post-con blues after Coco vid last weekend, but you guys have really tempered that by giving me some wonderful, wonderful supportive comments. I've had so many people saying that they, they love my my style and my sense of humour and... and the, the content of my videos, and I'm very pleased to hear that, because starting out doing videos uh, that hundreds and hundreds of people are watching is quite a 
daunting thing, as you can imagine. And having a few of those people saying, well, these are great, thank you, keep going, uh, really, really does mean a lot. So thank you very much for all of your, all of your lovely comments. It really, really does mean a lot. Honest, it does. I don't think people say that enough in YouTube videos. People don't thank people for, for lovely comments, so thank you very much. Um, and keep them up. And if you are thinking of leaving me any horrible comments, then you can get stuffed and jump in a canal, because I don't need that in my life. But what is helpful is this little pouch that I just made. I just made this. This is made from uh, sheep leather. Sheep leather. It's oak tanned. And I forget the name of the person who, who tanned this, but I got this at York Viking Festival at the start of this year. This year? This year, when we were still allowed out. And it's kind of based on a, on a whole hodgepodge of different uh, belt pouches. And it, at some point it will have a tongue here so that you can actually open it and it will, it will have a little knobble on the end so you can open it and it doesn't go all the way open so people can't pickpocket you. And on the back it has two of these little belt loops, but it's just a little basic pouch and I didn't know how much I needed a basic leather pouch until I made this. This thing is currently uh, my embroidery work pouch. But that's a nice big tip, I think, is if you have a reenactment impression for a time period and a culture that has a pouch, a belt pouch, and you find pictures of them, or a handbag of some kind, make that bad boy. Because there is nothing worse than being at a reenactment and not having somewhere to put your mobile or your house keys, your car key your wallet or your sun lotion. And I've been in situations where I've literally had my house keys, my car key, my card wallet, and like 20 pounds in 10 pound notes stuffed down the sleeve of my Viking tunic because I didn't have a pouch. None of my mates were around with bags. I didn't have a bag, an authentic bag, and I didn't have any modern dressed mates around me. So I just had to shove all of this crap down my sleeve and then I realised I had to fight, so I had to spend like 10 minutes fishing, like, working, like, neat, let's not do that, working all of this junk out of my sleeve so that I could pick it out of my neck hole. So make yourself a pouch, guys, make yourself a pouch. There are people who will say that pouches this big are not authentic for the Viking period. Well, let me tell you, that there are bigger pouches than this from the Viking period, but most of the belt, belt pouches we found, we found are, like, really small, They're like the size of a, a man's fist or slightly bigger. But if you want to make a, a book bag or something, then they're an amazing accessory. The book bags, the, the Viking period, early medieval and Viking period book bags uh, that they've got in the National Museum of Ireland in Dublin, they are magnificent. They're masterpieces of medieval leatherwork. If anyone wants to make me an authentic Dublin book bag... Um, I will love you forever. I will owe you several pints. What I'm doing at this stage in the game is just sewing a little box around the buttonholes. If you can see it there. Sewing a little box of running stitches around the buttonhole where the buttonhole is going to be just to secure it. Because I don't want my buttonholes to fall apart. The thing that I've found in the past is my buttonhole stitches are not tight enough. I'm not ashamed to admit I use like my finger and my thumb for measuring, so these are currently one pinky finger tip width in from the hem. And I use my thumb all the time. I, I know that my th from from heat from the tip to the knuckle, and I have a handy scar on my knuckle that lets me know that this is exactly two inches, so I know that my thumb fully extended from the tip to this scar is exactly two inches. So that actually it makes a pretty a pretty damn infallible little tape measure that I am not afraid to use when sewing. And I will continue to use this. Oh, it's never led me wrong. It's never led me wrong. <clears throat> never led me astray. Uh, that's possibly why none of my clothing is ever square when I measure it. That could be why every single piece of clothing I've ever made looks a little bit shoddy because I use my thumbnail instead of a tape measure. But just doing, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing me. You do you, I'll do me. And I cut the buttonhole now, I'm scared. <laughs> so scared. Are you all excited? It is done. It is done. Tush. Hole. Tush bottom. Buttonhole. To Apparently when I was doing the um, 
the Coco, apparently when I was doing the Coco Vid Gentleman's Club uh, um, panel, people were going mad in the comments when I started speaking in Welsh. I very briefly spoke in Welsh and Gaelic, and people were going crazy when I spoke Welsh and saying that I should speak Welsh more in my videos. So um, I, I will speak more. There will be more Cymraeg in my videos henceforth. People want a Lachlanur Cymraeg instead of the Welsh Viking, then a Lachlanur Cymraeg you will have. I love speaking Welsh. I, I speak Welsh too little. I speak Welsh with my family and a couple of my friends up here. I should speak Welsh more often. If anybody wants to speak Welsh in the comments, please do comment in Welsh. That would be lovely. So I've started doing the actual buttonhole stitch now, and this has always been my Achilles heel. Because I don't put them close enough, and you should space them one thread apart. And I know you have to space them one thread apart, but I am an impatient millennial. I am not one of these Gen Z kids who understands that some things take time, and I am not one of those jaded old Gen Xers who has learnt that things take time. I am still an impatient young millennial. Alright, so... And I'm slightly hungry. So leave me alone. I'm learning. I'm developing. I'm developing the... I'm developing the Tao of... buttonholes. I'm the unworked block of Taoism. I'm just sick of my buttonholes looking like crap, and I've got a load of garments that need buttonholes doing on them. Actually, I went to I went to a, a ball last year with Nikki was there uh, from Liam from the channel Liam. She's great and loves 1830s. Hi Nikki, you rock. Uh, it's partly her fault. In fact, it's entirely her fault that I'm in the costume community. So thank you, Nikki. Um, and the trousers that I was wearing for that, a, didn't have buttonholes, and b. Uh, didn't actually support themselves properly, and I wasn't wearing braces, uh, so I had to actually be sewn. I had to have my waistcoat sewn into the waistband of those pants, which was an incredible little moment for me. Uh, slightly drunk on gin, getting sewn into my trousers, so there we go. Uh, I've come to the end of this thread, uh, and this video is getting a little long, so uh, instead of you following me sewing buttonhole stitch all the way around this buttonhole, I'm going to leave it for there. I'm going to make some food, and I'm going to get on with sewing this buttonhole. But so far, I think it looks pretty good. Look at that. They're pretty neat. They look pretty neat to me. Hey. So, once again, yeah, thank you for joining me today. I'm sorry it's been a bit undramatic, um, but I'm wiped after this week. So, for next week, I will have... Uh, my video about the Vikings up. That's going to be great fun. I'm really looking forward to making that video. That's going to be cool. Uh, and thank you so much to all of you for subscribing. I do hope that you're enjoying the channel. Um, people are giving me suggestions for videos to make. Please do keep suggesting things. I uh, hopefully will at some point be able to have a community tab on the channel so that we can actually like exchange ideas and you can tell me things that you like and things that you want to see more of because at the moment you can either do that through the comments or through my Instagram and that's like slightly clunky um, but thank you to all my new subscribers for coming thank you so much uh, if you've enjoyed this video please do like it if you haven't enjoyed it keep it to yourself or I will come round to your house and put crap buttonholes on all of your trousers huh so that's up to you isn't it Thank you very much for watching, and Tantronisa, Will Vaur.